Hello students, so up until last class uh, we saw uh, the Riemann integrable functions and how they are connected with the Riemannian sum and um, how Riemannian sum is connected with uh, definite integral and uh, we also looked into some properties of uh, Riemann integrable function. Uh, today we, uh, we will list few more properties of uh, Riemann integrable functions and then we go to um, fundamental theorem of integral calculus and uh, what do we mean by antiderivatives and primitive. So, as I was uh, mentioning uh, about the properties, so another property, uh, property 5 of uh, Riemann integrability is uh, if uh, f is a Riemann integrable function, if f is a Riemann integrable function, function uh, then mod of f is also a Riemann integrable function and uh, we have integral from is less or equal to integral from a to b mod of fx dx so and so that means the mod of uh, function f is also demand integrable and it satisfies this inequality uh, third uh, sorry uh, the sixth property in this regard is uh, it is little bit uh, how to say um, uh, towards the direction of uh, what we have already studied in uh, limit and uh, limit continuity and differentiability of two functions. So, we know that uh, if uh, uh, f and g are both uh, uh, how to say um, uh, continuous then some of the continuous functions uh, would also be continuous. Um, or um, how to say uh, if you are calculating the limit then in that case if uh, limit of f and limit of g exists then the sum of their limits or difference of their limits or product of their limits uh, also exist. So, here in this case also um, we have the similar theorem. So, um, if f and g are two Riemann Riemann integrable functions, Riemann integrable functions, then sum of these two functions is also Riemann integrable. Riemann integrable. Um, the difference of these two functions would also be Riemann integrable and uh, uh, the product of uh, these two functions would also be Riemann integrable. Uh, for the quotient uh, you need to have uh, how to say the non-zero condition on the function g that uh, g has to be uh, uh, non-zero throughout that interval uh, a to b and then we can talk about its Riemann integrability. So, it is pretty much along the same line of uh, limit and continuity uh, how to say properties of uh, sum of two functions or difference of two functions and things like that. And again for the proof of this theorem I would uh, recommend you to look into the look into the books which I recommended. Next uh, in uh, Riemann integrable functions we have uh, something called um, let me go to a new page the primitive we sometimes also call it as anti derivative. So, the definition is if f is a differentiable function, differentiable function such that f dash is equal to a given function f on the closed interval a comma b 
then the capital function f is called the antiderivative or the primitive whichever you prefer primitive of the function uh, f. Uh, and sometimes we write it and uh, this function and the function capital F is also called the integral function integral function of f integral function of f so what do we what do we mean by this so it means that we can write it means that we can write the function f this small f um, we can write this function small we can write this function let me use a different notation so we can write this function small f as let's say a to x f t dt so the capital fx can be expressed as the integral of the function small f and uh, if you take the derivative on both sides then in that case uh, the right hand uh, the, the left hand side will be f dash x which is equals to the function f t and uh, that capital f based on this definition is called as the anti derivative or the integral function um, of this um, of this uh, small function f and uh, if you have but you see that in order to write this expression in order to write this expression we need to have some special conditions on this function small f and capital f we cannot just simply write uh, every uh, uh, cap every, every function capital f as uh, this integral form so the first the very first criteria in this regard is uh, every continuous function so every continuous function every continuous function f possesses a primitive that means if f is a continuous function then it can be written as this integral form so the first very first criteria we need to have for the function uh, small f is that it needs to be continuous and then you can be able to write the uh, capital f as the integral form of this small f now we can put this in a small theorem so the theorem goes like this so the first theorem is uh, if a function f f is bounded and integrable on a b then the function f defined as capital f x equals to integral from a to x f t d t is continuous on a b and uh, if further if f is continuous continuous on the closed interval a b then capital f is the primitive or you can write capital f dash x equals to small f x so if you have the bounded function f a small f then in that case uh, this continuity criteria is pretty much clear because uh, in order to show the continuous function you take um, 
fx at, at a certain point you take um, fx minus fc integral from a to x ft minus integral from a to c ft and uh, from there ft is bounded so it will be pretty much obvious to show the continuity of the function f a capital f on this closed interval a b uh, however if your small function f is continuous then in that case your capital f is actually the antiderivative or the primitive of this uh, small fx and uh, from this uh, theorem in a way or from this definition in a way the first funda the fundamental theorem of integral calculus is motivated. So, from here we can state our very important theorem of uh, Riemann integration which is basically fundamental theorem of integral calculus. So, fundamental theorem of integral calculus says that let us say I write it as theorem. Uh, So, I can write it in terms of theorem. So the theorem says that um, a function f a function f is bounded and integrable on the closed interval a b and there exists a function f such that such that f dash x equals to small fx on the closed interval a b then we can be able to write integral from a to b fx dx as fb minus fa. So, that means uh, if you uh, if uh, if we have a function uh, small fx which is uh, basically bounded and Riemann integrable on the closed interval a to b and if we have f dash x equals to fx then in that case uh, the integration of the function uh, small f from a to b can be written as the difference uh, of this fb minus uh, fb and fa. So, this is also in a way uh, our Newtonian integral. So, Newtonian integral is also about finding an antiderivative or find, finding uh, how to say a primitive of the uh, of the function so that you can be able to uh, write it as a, uh, um, as a as a how to say integral uh, of that uh, function. So, what I mean is so if you have something like uh, i equals to integral from uh, 1 to 2 um, x to the power 5 dx then this is basically my small fx and I need to find a function capital F such that capital fx f dash x equals to small fx. So, this is all about uh, uh, finding an antiderivative and if, uh, if we can be able to find a capital f dash x of uh, this type such that capital F dash x equals to small fx then in that case the integral would be nothing but the difference of that capital F at the point 2 minus uh, the value of that capital F at the point 1. So, in this case it is very easy to find out this capital F dash x. Um, so, here our capital F dash x would be so here our capital F dash x would be x to the power 6 by 6. So, this is our capital F dash x and if I take the derivative of that capital F dash x then we will obtain x to the power 5 and this is this x to the power 5 is our small f x here and uh, you see uh, this is our capital f x and if I this is our capital f x and uh, 
capital Fx, then it's basically 2 to the power 6 by 6 minus 1 to the power 6 by 6 and that will be the answer. So, based on this uh, how to say fundamental theorem of integral calculus we can see that how a function and its antiderivative are connected and uh, it's um, how to say one of the important theorems in uh, integral calculus and uh, um, it's uh, also very interesting and uh, I hope uh, you you were able to um, understand this I would also uh, try to um, also try to give you some examples um, so first let me um, let me uh, state the two last theorems of this uh, Riemann integrable functions before we jump into um, any uh, example so the first another uh, so the first theorem is uh, the first theorem which I am talking about is um, first mean value theorem first mean value theorem So the first mean value theorem says that if f and g are so it's more or less like the mean value theorem which we uh, which we uh, studied in differential calculus. So in the differential calculus also you have a continue uh, you have. Um, how to say a function uh, a differentiable function on a uh, on an open interval a b which is continuous on the closed interval a b uh, then in that case you can be able to find a point c in between the interval a to b such that uh, f dash c can be written as f b minus f a by b minus a so here um, it's pretty much the same uh, so we say that f and g are two riemann integrable functions on the closed interval a b and uh, g keeps the same sign keeps the same sign over a to b then there exists A mu lying between the bounds of F such that the product of the integration integral from A to B Fx times Gx dx is equals to mu times integral from a to b g x d x. So, this is the first um, mean value theorem which um, says that if you have two Riemann integrable functions f and g and uh, the function g keeps the same sign uh, over the interval a to b then uh, you have a uh, how to say you have a value basically mu which is uh, which is lying in between the upper bound and the lower bound of the function f so um, the function f is uh, is assumed to be uh, bounded because it is riemann integrable and uh, this point mu can be in between anywhere in uh, of the lower bound and upper bound then the sum of the, then the product of the integral from a to b uh, is equals to mu times the integral from a to b g x d x and uh, this is uh, this is basically our uh, first mean value theorem. So, here you can see that uh, uh, instead of calculating the product product of the integral we have replaced uh, we have replaced the function uh, value of the function f with its uh, with its uh, value mu. So, this mu is attained somewhere. Uh, so, mu is attained at at any point on this uh, interval a to b. So, it it can be at um, I do not know x equals to uh, x 2 or x 3 any any such point in the closed interval a b and uh, that value mu is basically multiplied uh, with the integral of the function um, g x from the point a to b and uh, that is actually um, that that will actually give us the value of the product of the integral on the left hand side. So, this is in a way a mean value theorem. So, we are taking any value of the function f 
between the upper bound and lower bound. Um, the next theorem in this regard is the second mean value theorem which states that um, so the second mean value theorem says that second mean value so the second mean value theorem says that if integral from a to b fx dx and integral from a to b gx dx both exist and f is monotonic on the interval a to b then there exists a c in the closed interval a to b such that integral from a to b fx times gx dx is equals to integral from as f a times integral from a to c g x d x plus f b times integral from c to b g x d x. So, this is this is an another uh, interesting theorem. So, we have both uh, uh, Riemann integrable function f and g so that these two definite integral exist and the function f is actually monotonic on this closed interval a b. Then in that case uh, we have a point c lying between uh, a to b. So, all we need is the monotonicity of the function f then we can be able to find a function c in this uh, closed interval a b such that uh, the product of the integral the product of the integral here is equals to f a times integral from a to c g x d x plus f b time integral from c to b g x d x. So, that means uh, in order to evaluate the product of the integral we do not need to evaluate the product all we have to find the value of the function f at the end points and then just evaluating the integral g x from a to c and c to b we can be able to find the value of the um, uh, of this uh, definite integral on the left hand side. So, this is an another uh, uh, how to say important theorem in this uh, regard. So, to the syllabus which I gave you earlier uh, in uh, there we uh, in the first lecture uh, we were uh, we, we were sort of planning to cover the partition definition of Riemann integrable functions and uh, some properties and then mean value theorems and uh, uh, so so far we have covered the theoretical part and uh, since it is a very extensive topic I would recommend you to look into the books uh, of Piskunov, uh, SK Mapa, um, also Santi Narayan um, for the for for to 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 know these things in detail. Um, uh, I will also try to work out uh, uh, two or three examples uh, probably uh, just to give you uh, an idea that uh, what do we uh, how to say mean by these uh, integrability uh, conditions and uh, um, the app, how to say one or two examples on the fundamental theorem of integral calculus. Um, also, most of my lectures uh, I will since I prefer to write it uh, here and work out the examples or theorems here, uh, but uh, some of my lectures would also include a PowerPoint presentation and um, I will try to make things uh, clear in those uh, PowerPoint presentations as well. Uh, so, it will be a mixture of both uh, uh, this writing on the board as well as uh, a PPT and uh, uh, in the next uh, lecture, we will uh, look into a few examples related to Riemann integrability and uh, fundamental theorem of integral calculus. And um, uh, today, we'll uh, stop our lecture here. So, thank you.